The Town of Plainville Established in 1721 at the Geographical Center of Connecticut. Everybody. Welcome to our town council meeting. Tonight is Monday, June 14th, 2018, 7 p.m. We'll begin our meeting with a Pledge of Allegiance and Councilman Wazarko, if you'll please lead us. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. This is a special night tonight for us. We have um, a couple of presentations to do, but we do have a few students that are here as um, winners of a Memorial Day essay contest. And um, they're here tonight. I'm hoping they're both here. And what I'd like to do is ask them to come up individually to read their essays for us. The first one I have is Kaylee Fangiulo from Wheeler School. Is Kaylee here? Nope, maybe she'll be here in a few minutes. Um, the second student is Gianna Findelarini. Is Gianna here also from Linden Street School? Well, I'm sure they're at home doing homework, <laughs> <laughs> as, as they should be. Um, we had thought they would be here tonight, but maybe they can make it to one of our other meetings. We'd like to um, have them back at any time that they can. So with that, we also have a few more um, other presentations tonight. Uh, the folks that we're going to be recognizing are people that have been volunteers in town organizations for a number of years. And many of them have been doing this for a very, very long time. And what I must say about all of our volunteers, whether in the fire department or on our boards and commissions, the work you do is very important. And I know that it takes time away from your family. It takes a lot of thoughtful deliberation, oftentimes when you're looking at things that are going to be affecting the town. And I can't say enough how much the town council appreciates everybody that steps up to volunteer for these various organizations. But tonight we have three people who have served and have since gone on to do some other things, and we are going to recognize them tonight. Um, the folks we're recognizing are Linda Ferguson. Linda was on our insurance commission. Gail Puglisi, who has been on the ZBA and Jeffy Romano, who has been on our fire department. So what I'd like to do is start off with um, Jeff Romano, and if Councilman Saunders would be so kind as to do the presentation for that plaque, that would be great. Then we'll do Linda and Gail together. <laughs> Jeff, we have so many of your fellow firefighters here tonight chiefs, past chief, uh, and a lot of people know how hard a job that is, volunteering for the fire department, all the hours, uh, the lost time with your family, um, all the effort that gets put in to keep the rest of the town safe. And uh, we're here tonight to celebrate your 21 years of service to the Pendle Fire Department. Um, the, the plaque doesn't say everything that we really want to express to you um, for all your efforts and you know, all, again all the time that you've given um, you know the pasta suppers the old timers uh, you know you really you, you went above and beyond just being a firefighter and we do appreciate that so what your plaque says is in deepest appreciation to Jeffrey Romano for 21 years of volunteer service as a member of the Plainville Fire Company, protecting the town of Plainville without reservation, demonstrating tremendous care and concern for his community, 
in defense of lives, safety, and property of its residents in their greatest time of need. And it's dated today, June 4th, 2018, by the Plainville Town Council. Thank you very much. Thank you. speaking but um, one thing I would like to say that this was probably the best 21 years of my life outside of my marriage and my children um, what a great group of guys um, they all became family uh, I would do anything for any of them and um, it's I think it's more than just volunteering for your town it's it's a brotherhood that a lot of people don't really understand and it, it's something that, you know, anybody who's thinking about getting in and volunteering should do it. it. It's great for the town, and it's great for the person. I mean, you, you grow as a person. You're, hearing, you know, you're able to help other people in their worst times. And like I said, I, I would never trade it for anything. And the chief, assistant chief, deputy chief machine, he's become like a brother to me. Um, if I didn't do this, I don't think my life would be complete. I mean, this, this was really a great experience, and I want to thank everyone and thank the town council for this award. Thank you. Well said. Um, I, I, right now, I would like to call to the podium both um, Gail Puglisi and Linda Ferguson. I'm going to be on TV. Yeah. Gee, thanks. <laughs> well, I'm calling you both up because I've gotten to know both of you, Gail, forever. I've known Gail for a very long time. But Linda and Gail actually work together at Carling Technologies. And Gail is a recent retiree of Carling. So I thought this would be nice for both of you to come up here together. And I'm close behind, so. Oh, you are. Oh, good for you. Well, I'm sure Gail will tell you that it's a, a wonderful time of her life, and she's enjoying every minute of it. So it's certainly something to look forward to. But for Linda, we have a certificate, which I'd like to read. Um, this is a volunteer service recognition certificate from the town of Plainville for your valuable selfless commitment and nine years of service to the community as a member of the Insurance Commission presented to Linda Ferguson. It's dated June 4th, 2018. It's signed by me, Ty Cox, Jesse Nazzo, Rosemary Moranti, Scott Saunders, Deborah Tompkins, and Christopher Wazorko. So again, we certainly do appreciate all the time and energy. That's an important commission for us, and your volunteerism does not go unnoticed. So thank you so much, Linda. Gail has, um, Gail has been a member of the Zoning Board of Appeals for almost 19 years. That's a long time to be on one of those land use commissions, and I'm sure there were times where it was um, challenging but rewarding for you, Gail. And, and we really do appreciate all the time that you have and energy you've put into it. As I said earlier, all of these volunteers take time away from their family, take time away from their friends, and they're there when they're needed. And I cannot say it enough how much we appreciate all the volunteers in our town. And, and to stay doing it as long as you ladies have is certainly a testament to your love of Plainville. Now, Gail, there's a plaque on order for you. <laughs> I, I don't have it for you tonight, but I promise you, you will be getting a plaque. I'll personally deliver it to you. Congratulations again, both of you. Thank you so much for your service to the town. We really appreciate it. Thanks.
that, um, that takes care of our presentations tonight. We do not have a public hearing, so I will go right in and ask for a motion to approve the minutes of the previous meeting. <clears throat> Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve the minutes from May 21st, 2018, special and regular meeting. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Announcements and reports. Do we have any announcements or reports tonight from anybody? Oops. Can we, can we possibly give a minute to anybody who might want to leave? I, I'm sure they want to stay for the whole meeting, right? <laughs> 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 Never. You didn't call them an alarm. <laughs> yeah, I might be arrested for that. Thanks, guys. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Uh, back to our back to our item announcements and reports. Does anybody have anything to report? I will report two things. Go ahead. Uh, the first one is uh, I attended the unveiling of the gazebo with a couple of other council members at senior housing or at the housing authority. Um, a gazebo that was put together by tech ed students from Plainville High School and they did a beautiful job on it um, and I'm sure other council members that were there will speak to that um, but it's nice to see our students getting involved in creating things that uh, are on display and in use around town and the only other thing I want to say is uh, this coming Saturday is Wings and Wheels at Robertson Airport from 10 to 3 um, definitely come out take an airplane or hel helicopter ride and look at what we have to offer in Plainville and, and it supports two charities, uh, the, the Pettit Family Foundation and the Plainville Community Food Pantry. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else? I wanted to also, I was going to mention the project that the Tech Ed students from Plainville High School finished. Uh, Mr. Marchese and Mr. Chase were the teachers that were involved with the assembly and the planning and the whole um, the whole project. It really is a wonderful space for folks to get out and sit outside. Councilwoman Randy was there as well. Very Rosemary, nice. did you have any few it was, words It was to very, add? Ni very nice, and I think it's something that the residents will really enjoy during, the, especially during the summer months. Yeah. Yeah. It was very good. Okay. Thank you. If there are no other reports, we'll move on. Report of the town attorney. Attorney. No, no report tonight. Okay. Thank you. Good to see you. Thank you. And Robert. Report of the town manager. Yeah, an appointment. Oh, I skipped something. My my apologies. Appointments and resignations. And we do have one tonight. <clears throat> Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to appoint Adam Bergenti as a regular member of the Aviation Commission for the term ending October 31st, 2019. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? Um, Madam Chair, if I may? Yes. Um, since I've been on the commission, um, Adam attends the meetings and he is a very good voice to have there and he has input and it's appreciated. Okay, great. Anything else? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Thank you. Do we have any other appointments tonight that are not on our agenda? Nope. Okay. Now we shall move on to report of the town manager. Thank you. I have a couple of items. The first is the water pollution control phosphorus removal upgrade project bid. Uh, on May 17th, bids were received for the water pollution control phosphorus upgrade project. A low bid was submitted by Daniel O'Connell's sons of Holyoke, Mass., in the amount of $11,164,000. This is approximately $330,000 less than the engineer's estimate for the project. The consultants from Ty and Bond have reviewed the bids and met with the Capital Projects Building Committee last week. The committee is recommending that the bid be awarded to O'Connell's sons. The second low bidder, Lawrence Brunelli, Inc. of Farmington, filed a protest citing that there were price discrepancies in the O'Connell's bid. 
However, these were considered minor and did not change the order of the bids. Uh, the town attorney and the construction attorney agreed with, the, with this conclusion as well. You have information with regards to that in your packages. Uh, there is an item under new business that would award the water pollution control phosphorus upgrade improvements to Daniel, Daniel O'Connell's sons of Holyoke Mass in the amount of $11,164,000 as recommended by the Capital Projects Building Committee. And I will point out that Joseph Peloso, who's the superintendent of the wastewater treatment plant, is here this evening if you have any questions as well. So I know that he attended the meetings and, uh, and, has, and has participated in this project, project uh, all the way through. So. There's no questions. Uh, the next item I have is the summer meeting schedule. The town council has traditionally had an abbreviated meeting schedule during the summer months. Town staff is recommending that the town council cancel the first meetings of the months during July, August, and September. If that is agreeable by the town council, the meeting dates would then be July 16th, August 20th, and September 17th. Special meetings could be scheduled if necessary. Next item I have is liability, auto, and property insurance discussion. The town council conducted a work session on May 7th to discuss potential options for liability, auto, and property insurances for the town. Town staff were, direct, uh, uh, were directed to gather some additional information to be brought back to the town council for tonight's meeting. Uh, Finance Director Rob Buden and Dan Anderson from HD Seeger. The town's cons insurance consultants are here this evening to give some additional information they will also be presenting a recommendation for your consideration of their new business. So with your permission, I'd like to ask both of them to step forward. Sure. I, I believe it'll be a relatively brief discussion as uh, it's a follow-up from our work session. As you may recall, we did solicit uh, you know, bids for this, for this, uh, for these, for this insurance, and um, I think you'll be, uh, I think most people will be pleased with the results. Okay. Thank you. <coughs> Good evening. Um, as, as Robert mentioned, we went out and got the information you requested us to do. Um, we initially planned on just going out for lap coverage, which is a liability automotive property. But uh, the numbers, which I believe you have some numbers in front of you, um, are just overwhelming to not go with the workers' comp at the same time. So what we're recommending is to um, move both of our policies, LAP and workers' comp, from Kerma to Trident Insurance with uh, substantial dollar savings. Um, and you can see the difference in what we're paying this year, which is that very first column, to the third column. It's almost $200,000 difference. Um, if the numbers are just too big to not do both. <clears throat> Administratively, I'm a little concerned about the workers' comp side because that's more outside of my office. It affects many different departments. but. Through the help of our broker, I think we'll be able to get through it. The lab coverage, everything kind of goes through me, just bill payments, um, claims if we have any, um, you know, things like that. So I'm confident that'll be, you know, fairly easy to, to handle. Um, but these numbers are just too big to not to, to pass up the savings. So our, our, uh, our recommendation at this point is to go to try it, if you so approve. Uh, so this is effective July 1st? This will be effective uh, July 1st, yes. Okay. Yep. Going forward? Yep. All right. Did we budget um, a little bit more than this in, in our July 1st yes. outlook? Yep. Yeah, if you recall, our budget um, that was first presented to you was, you know, in a worst-case scenario. We did come back to you and say we could reduce it a little bit, and if we were to go out today, we could probably reduce it a little bit more. The budget was adopted as originally presented, so the budget is actually about two hundred thousand dollars higher than what these numbers are actually going to come in at. Okay. So it's you know it's it's a win-win. So I think it was seventy-five to eighty that we originally said we could reduce. It's even more than that now because of the soft market conditions. Okay. That's wonderful. So we could probably use the money in other places. So I mean you know. Well, there's always a mystery with budgeting when we're talking about the state of Connecticut. As well, well, that's exactly right. Yeah. It's always nice to have at least a little something somewhere that we can. Um, Breathe a little easier, yeah. if you will. Yeah, no, and, and the budget climates we've had the last few years, you know, to have good news like this is actually, it's, it's a breath of fresh air, so. Yeah. We'll see how it goes for this coming year. Does anybody have any questions for Rob? His uh, recommendation? 
We don't have to, do we have to vote on this, Robert, or is this yes. just, yeah. this is later on in our, yeah, um, yep. in our agenda? Just to approve the, uh, the vendor, the, the company tried it. Okay. Wonderful. Thanks so much for all your hard work. You're we welcome. appreciate it. Next item I have is the high school parking lot bid. Last Thursday, bids were open for the repaving of the high school parking lots and other areas around the athletic fields. Two bids were received, and the low bid was submitted by B&W Paving, Pavement and Landscaping of Waterford, Connecticut, in the amount of $1,625,000. There were also eight alternates, which totaled $345,500. The low bid currently exceeds the amount allocated for the project. ONG, the construction manager for the project, has met with the two bidders to determine what changes can be made to bring the cost of the project in line with the current budget. As a result of these discussions, ONG is recommending that some changes be made to the specifications and then to rebid the project. The goal is to still to have this work done this summer. They intend to uh, make the changes go out to bid again as soon as possible and, and hopefully be in a position to have the project uh, done this summer. But uh, due to the uh, the uh, the amount of the bids and the amount budgeted and in talking with the contractors they felt that there were some changes that could be made that could bring the bid down to to, to where we needed to be they'll be talking to both of those companies that put in bids for this they've spoken to them already both of them already okay. so, the, so the plan now is to make the changes after those discussions the contractors suggested some some changes that could bring the cost down they explain why maybe there were only two bidders that's why there weren't more bidders we were anticipating more bidders and uh, so those changes are going to be made, and uh, hopefully there'll be more competition, and um, and we'll be able to bring the price down, you know, where it needs to be, like I said earlier. And they're still anticipating this will be done over this summer season, correct? Yeah, we hope to have the bids back perhaps by the end of the month. Uh, may require, you know, the Capital Projects Building Committee will have to review it, make a recommendation to the council. It may require you to have a special meeting, uh, you know, just maybe on that particular, you know, you know, to get to get at least a quorum of the council together. We're, we're going to try to. Again, do it as quickly as possible. Okay. This is a project that needs to be done during the summer months. We prefer not to lose a season if possible. All right. Okay, thanks. Next item I have is the revenue collector suspense list discussion. The revenue collector has submitted the suspense list to the town council for consideration. The suspense list includes delinquent motor vehicle, personal property, real estate, and taxes owed by deceased persons. That are deemed to be what we what, what is called uncollectible. Despite being considered uncollectible, town staff will still continue to attempt to collect these taxes, utilizing a collection agency, or the town attorney, or the, or the constables. Uh, Anna Lagasse, who is the revenue collector, is here this evening to answer any questions that the town council have may may have regarding the suspense list. And there is an item under new business as well. So I, I know that we gave you a list of the suspense list. You know, I can tell you, you know, motor vehicles, uh, um, you know, there are people who move out of state, don't pay their motor vehicle taxes uh, until they come back and want to register a car. There's, there's really no way to, to get back on them other than to perhaps threaten them with a collection agency. You know, that sometimes that's effective, sometimes it isn't. Mm -hmm. uh, with regards to personal property, businesses close up, they move out of town, they take their personal property with them, and you know, so there's not much option with respect to that. Uh, with real estate, it's 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 generally the paper roads, you know, roads that, that you know that they're not they're parcels of land that were intended to be roads at some point in time, and, and you know, the, from developers from way back, and uh, you know they're not you know they're not they're small you know parcels, and uh, uh, you know there's you know there's a possibility that we could you know go through the the foreclosure process, but we have to track down. You know the, the owners of the land in order to give them notice and that's a time-consuming operation and obviously the people who have passed away it's going to be oh. difficult to collect from them as well so you know that's that, but again the, the the tax collector's office the revenue collector's office does uh you know continue to um to uh, make efforts to collect these taxes and in fact we do collect uh, you know some monies on this you know even though they're on the suspense list but what it does is it takes them off our books in terms of you know uh Showing as a you know as an account receivable, it doesn't really make sense from an accounting standpoint to have this on the books as, a, as a, when we really don't expect that we're you know that we're going to be able to collect these taxes. Okay. Anybody have any questions for Robert so far with his report? Well, 
Anna, is there anything you want to add to that, or um, you can come up if you like? What? Can't hear you. She's talking to Anna, not you. So slowly. Um, no, just that uh, we do have a, a report that I that I keep track of, and I'll keep track of whoever's been collected. So even though it's in suspense, I still use that as a as a revenue coming in. It's just when it's taken off, it's not counted as like he said revenue. It's not something that we feel we're going to be able to do our budget accordingly to this to this amount. This year it's a little bit higher, not by not by much, maybe like twenty thousand more than last year, but it's still, again, it stays about the same every year. And like you said, the, um, the real estate is really just the lands that we're trying to work on, and we are working with Mastriani. They're with Mastriani right now. Okay. Okay. Thanks, Anna. Mm -hmm. No problem. With that in mind, uh, I'll, I'll turn over to uh, Scott for happenings. Okay. Got a list. I have a very short, uh, brief happenings list this evening. Um, over at the Senior Center, uh, Veterans Coffee Hour is being hosted tomorrow, June 5th at 10.30 a.m. with Wayne, Wayne Rue, a veterans liaison for Hartford Healthcare. And this is for all veterans over the age of 60 and their spouses. They ask that you call the Senior Center to register for the event. On Tuesday, June 5th at 1 p.m., they are hosting a class on understanding Parkinson's disease, gain a broader, uh, broader understanding of the symptoms, treatment, and management of Parkinson's disease, and this is presented by Kathleen McGuire, and this is a free event for all. Uh, healthy Eating for Weight Loss on Wednesday, June 6th at 11 a.m. This is a free workshop that will present ways to eat healthy and be conscious of healthy eating throughout our lives. They will discuss what it means to be healthy as we age. Uh, please call the Senior Center to register for that as one uh, event as well. Grandparents Raising Grandchildren is being hosted on Tuesday, June 12th at 10.30 a.m. Attend this monthly um, event to share resources, ideas, struggles, and joys, uh, and more with others who are raising their grandchildren as well. The funding for this program is made possible in part by the Older Americans Act through the North Central Area Agency on Aging. And on Thursday, June 14th at 11 a.m., they're hosting Butterflies of the World, it is being presented by John Root, naturalist and educator, and they ask that you register for that event um, at 860-747-5728. And that's all I have to report on. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody have any questions for Scott with his report? Thank both of you. Okay. We'll move on to our public comment of the section of our meeting. During this portion of the meeting, we welcome the public to come to either podium. Please state your name and address. You'll be given one opportunity to speak to the council for three minutes. I do have somebody that signed up first, so Catherine Lobella, you'll be first. Anybody that wishes to speak after that will certainly recognize you. Catherine Labella, 50 Pierce Street. I oppose alignment C of the Farmerton Canal Heritage Trail. On May 30th, a registered repeat sex offender was arrested after exposing himself on the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail in Hamden. He did this in front of cyclers and joggers. There were families with children nearby. I can almost hear you thinking, oh, I knew this would come up. We don't need to hear this. The trail is safe. I believe you do need to hear this from people whose lives are being and will be negatively impacted by this trail. Things like this are already happening in Plainville and in other communities. Several years ago, I was walking my dog in Norton Park. It was almost dusk, and I was finishing my walk with a park buddy and her dog. She reached her car first, and I continued to walk. A man on a bike came up to me, seemingly out of nowhere. He began asking questions about my dog's dog, then socially inappropriate questions about me. Thankfully, my walking buddy saw this and drove up to us to see if we were okay. The man quickly rode off. I bring my dog to a chiropractic vet in East Granby. On the way home, we often stop and walk a section of the trail in Simsbury. One day, we were followed by someone who, thank goodness, had obviously been drinking. I say that because my dog and I were able to outdistance him. Both times I had my cell phone with me, but I've often wondered what would happen on either occasion if I had been less fortunate. I chose to walk on public land and trails on both of these occasions that I've mentioned. 
I chose my home in a quiet and relatively safe neighborhood in Plainville, as others who addressed the, their concerns about the impact of this trail with you. We want our neighborhoods and our homes to continue to be safe. When we see a registered sex offender so obviously chose the trail to prey on its users, we become concerned about the sex offender who is not so obvious. Will the children at the bus stop addressed by the Perrin Road residents be affected? Will the children on Pierce Street or Broad Street be exposed to this or other more threatening behavior? How about the people attending an historical society event? Will they enjoy this type of spectacle? I know that I do not want to see it from my back porch. Please say no to any future phase of Alignment C through Plainville neighborhoods, especially since there are state roads that can safely accommodate this trail through town. I respectfully request that this full statement and the attached article become part of the public record along with the council minutes. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak to the council? John? John Kislick, 65 Ferrosville Avenue. Good evening, town councilors. Good evening. I have a few issues tonight. New Britain Herald, Tuesday, May 29th. Environmental panel takes dim view of Tilcon plan. I wish all of you would read the complete article. I'll read the first paragraph. A state environmental council has concluded that the Tilcon mining proposal would be adverse and that a study of the plan doesn't establish the need for a new reservoir. I've been after this council for a long time to make a decision one way or the other. Uh, by not rejecting this, I feel that you are doing a disservice to the citizens of Plainville and our health and future safety of our water. Next thing. <coughs> Uh, the two young ladies that were here last meeting on that recycling, you know, that, that doesn't make much sense to me. Um, supposedly our tonnage has been over lately, but I'm wondering if that has, I don't know how they set, how much tonnage were allowed, and I'm wondering if the 740 homes that used to be picked up by Bristol aren't included in this or wasn't figured right when we added them into uh, CWPM now and uh, the other person before. So are we really over our, our tonnage that's allowed or is there some kind of figure that's wrong? I, I wish the council would look into that and, and give me an answer. But the other part is it doesn't make sense that you're gonna, you think you're gonna force people to put more into recycling. What I think you'll do if they have to buy these bags, I think people will be throwing stuff into recycle that doesn't belong into recycle because there you don't have to bag it. It, it it's, it's, I don't think it's a good plan. I think what we're doing is fine. I think most of the people recycle, I know I do, and we're only, we only recycle every other week. So, you know, it's telling you something. So maybe, um, you know, I hope this council weighs that one too. I, I really don't like it. I don't think it's a good idea. I think what we're doing now is fine. The other thing I have is the bump outs. Again, you've probably seen the one out here, the entrance to the police station, somebody ran down the sign again. And probably five months ago, the one at Pierce Street was run down. I saw um, car parts there, uh, fan shroud or something, other parts of the, the car. I mean, this is dangerous, and especially now, you have a bicycle lane right through there too. For bicycles to go around that bump out, they're gonna go right into a car lane and you have the bump out on the other side. You know, you have two cars coming, they're gonna, the possibility of head-on collisions. I mean, those bump outs are worthless. They're not slowing anybody down. And I asked before to remove those bump outs. They're worthless. And the same thing at Pierce Street. I mean, the people have to go so wide to go around that turn. It's, it's just ridiculous. And, and, and they're a waste of space. And they are dangerous, especially, like I said, with our bicycle paths. Thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Thank you. 
need my TOCON report. Huh? <laughs> uh, David Spencer, 127 Milford Street Extension. Um, the mill rate has been set for this year, and um, yet we have a, um, a referendum on the fire truck issue coming up in a few weeks, uh, which could put the town two million, two point two million, whatever, uh, further into debt. Um, well, if if that refer if the referendum passes, will this affect the mill rate? Will you have to revisit the mill rate to adjust for the extra expense that's going to be needed? No, we won't have to do that. Okay, so I mean, I don't know when we start paying on that if the uh, the referendum passes. So, um, uh, uh, I'm uh, not, has that been figured into the budget that? The reason the council decided to um, do a long-term borrowing on these trucks rather than put it into our cap our annual capital budget is because we have old debt that is retiring, meaning it's coming off of our um, our debt service line. So we can borrow additional monies without it affecting the mill rate at this point in time. Okay, I mean, maybe my understanding of economics is a little simplistic, but it, I mean, it seems like, okay, you buy the truck, but you have to pay for it, so. Yes, we do. So, how can that kind of not affect the... Uh, the council has established a, a long-term plan for our capital and for our long-term borrowing. And we've, we've um, set aside a certain amount of money every year that will be dedicated to paying down our long-term debt. And as I said, we have debt that is coming off. In other words, it's retiring, it's no longer going to be there. So we can borrow other monies and it'll just fill that, um, that gap. So okay. it's not going to change the outlook that we've put together over the next many years. Well, I, I mean, on a personal... Um basis understanding uh, I mean it sounds to me like you're saying well we're paying off the credit card it's time to max it out again uh, I hope it's we're not, not what I'm saying it's not, not what I'm saying having that kind of attitude um, it's not what I'm saying sir at all no okay well I mean it seems like that's how the uh, the Wheeler school uh, was sold to the, the public that okay we've paid down the debt Correct. time to get more debt you know so um, I mean I, I'm sure there are expenses but uh, I mean it would be nice if you know sometime in the future you know we could pay down the debt and kind of keep it down you know well there are that that would be lovely in a perfect world however the town has ongoing needs and some of the ongoing needs are doing um, major improvements to our schools and to our firehouses and to our libraries and to all of our other buildings and that requires capital and the other, one of the other things we've identified is the best way to finance are these two fire trucks there's always going to be a need for the town to take care of its capital so to just say well the debt came off we're not going to do anything else with that money wouldn't really be um, a very responsible way of looking at your long-term plan no no understood I, I just don't want you know I'm hoping there isn't any kind of attitude well we've paid off some debt let's look for something else to to spend it on <laughs> well I I yeah. understand how you could interpret it that way but again as I said there's always a need running a municipality for things that have to be taken care of and if we can borrow some money at, at a fairly low interest rate right now to take care of these things that are hopefully going to last 25 to 30 years. It's probably the best way to do it at this point in time. Okay, well, one, one other question. Um, a couple of meetings ago, uh, Chairwoman Pugliese, uh, you know, I, I, I spoke about um, the um, the, uh, the town budget uh, vote and how I didn't feel it was really publicized as well as it could have been 
and one of your comments was that um, you felt you had the signage out for the appropriate number of days before the event. Um, I, I, could you clarify that for me a little bit? What is the appropriate number of days before the event? And I mean, is that some kind of a uh, agreement, rule, statute, whatever? Not really. I think it just is a common sense approach to putting them out a couple of weeks before the, the budget vote so that people see them. If we put them out a month ahead, people see them and then it almost becomes invisible after seeing it for so many times. It doesn't actually stay with well, people. Well, I don't know if I agree with that. That point could be argued, I agree. But I think we put them out a couple of weeks before the, um, the budget vote. I believe there is plenty of publicity when our budget vote takes place through the various media that we have. We have a, um, a televised meeting schedule. Every meeting that we talk about the budget, it's on television. We also televised every one of our work sessions. People could watch every single one of them if they were interested. Well. So I think there is, um, there is a sincere effort to put the information out. Whether people choose to participate, that's, that's their personal preference. But I believe we do a very good job of publicizing it. Okay, I'm not sure how many people are tuned in to Nutmeg TV, but, you know, hopefully they are. Oh, I, people do watch because people comment to me about it, so I w I'm surprised about the number of people that do watch. Maybe not all the time, but they tune in. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Anybody? Yes, sir. Dave Albert, uh, 56 Highbury Lane. Um, I wanted to talk about the um, this Board of Ed extension. That that um, I, I'd like to know how much it's actually costing the town. I understand there's you know varying rates of um, wage increases, but would I be off in saying that it's around six hundred thousand dollars for this new extension on the contract? Uh, are you talking about the teachers' contract? Yes. Um, I, I don't have that exact number, so I couldn't tell you if you're accurate or not. I can find out for you. And I would, I would get appreciate back to you. that. You want to know what the extension cost? Yeah, how much? How much? One year? Yes. Okay, and I, I'd also like to know um, why, with all these insurance overages, um, are the teachers not kicking in more than what they what they have in the past? That I mean, what's basically happening is. Um, the taxpayers are, are funding 100% of the employees' premiums, the overages. No, the, the employees contribute toward their health care. I, I, I know they contribute, but they're okay. contributing. Uh, at, la at the last meeting, they were saying that their uh, percentage is staying the same. And, I don't, and anywhere else, you go to a, a private company, uh, this type of situation, they would increase their their copay. I mean, it, it, it's 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 beyond me why that wasn't even addressed. Well, it is my understanding that the board of education, along with the um, administration, agreed to a one-year extension. Now, those things will be looked at when the contract is renegotiated. Um, most certainly, that will be looked at at that point in time after the one-year extension. But, but, why but it's wasn't a contract, the... so unless they go back in and reopen the whole contract to discuss that, that is the agreement that they came to. Yeah, I, I just wonder why you would extend it, given this whole atmosphere now. I mean, the state of Connecticut, this was the one year that they were going to meet their budget, perhaps. Going forward, it, 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 it's even worse, and it's going to get even worse. And I, I don't know why the Board of Ed would extend a, a, a set, uh, the, the contract and basically tie their hands. Because what's going to happen is they've they basically given them another year of, of, of goodness. So um, that's just me. I mean, um, it, 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 well, whatever. I mean, uh, let me move on to something else here. Um, going to Mr. Kislik's um, thing about Tilcon. Um, you need to look at the Hartford Current. They had a, 
an article on it and they had uh, pictures from up above of the absolute devastation that this does. And a lot of that's hiking trails. It's beautiful up there and um, it's 100% kill on all the animals living there. And uh, last but not least is our uh, my friends at Oakland Development with their um, wanting the town to take their land. Uh, sounds like a great deal. Uh, however, you take $80 per year, which doesn't sound much, but uh, you use the, um, the, what they call the AFR rates, which the IRS, IRS publishes for June. Uh, you're talking about $3,000 that you would have to deposit in order to get that 80 bucks a year, and that's forever. And I question why they didn't just throw it in with the, um, the people that, um, their house that they sold it on. Because I, I just think it's bad, bad, bad that the town would take this because it's setting a precedent for any developer taking land and then taking the bad stuff and just trying to dump it back on the town. So thank you. Oh, I want to thank you for the flag you gave me at the uh, parade. <laughs> thank you. It was free, right? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that has not? Marilyn? Good evening, council members and members of the community. Marilyn Charette, 18 Milford Street in Plainville. And uh, I wanted to support Kathy Labella and her opposition to this trail. I cannot fathom why any one of you on this council, I, I'm just embarrassed that you haven't considered the financial end of it, never mind the danger that is being proposed to the people, both physically. You know, I'm talking about uh, walking down Pierce Street, down the middle of Broad Street or the side, whichever one you decide on. Not to mention the financial. Two million dollars to go under a, a highway? We're broke. I've said this before at another council meeting. We don't have the money. And whether you decide on it now or five years down the road, it's not acceptable to me. I think you should have allowed this to go to the people and let the people in this town vote on it. I don't think that it should be an issue for all of you. I think it should go to us. And I hope that you'll think about that in the future. Okay? Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Does anybody else wish to speak that has not done so? Anybody else? Hey, ah, Joanne. <laughs> Joanne Edmond, 166 West Main Street. Oh, yes, that trail. Have you recon... I, I spoke about it the last time I was, you know, we had a meeting here, and I said, can, can, C-A-N, it meaning uh, alignment C, and think about going left off, uh, on Northwest Drive to Route 10, go down that way, or uh, why don't you consider alignment D, which goes at the edge of uh, the industrial park and figure it out through the woods and over the river and through the woods or whatever's over there. But um, alignment C is just ridiculous. It's just absolutely insane to want to go down Pierce Street or to or uh, the the backside of Peron Road, Pierce Street, uh, middle of uh, Broad Street, or either side. You're going to have those poles right in people's living rooms. They they haven't Broad Street hasn't even woken up to this yet. I've talked to a few people, and, and they're like, oh, well, uh, yeah, yeah, you know, they're sleeping. They got to wake up, just like I said, wake up, Plainville. 
they should wake up Plainville. Plainville people should have gone down to the to the voting booth. They should have struck down that budget, which is too darn high. Your your two million dollars here, two million, and that stupid parking lot over at the high school that you you sailed in uh, and attached to the Wheeler School project. That's not very nice. And, and, and that's too much money, another $2 million for that, uh, that project. It, it's not realistic. And it's like a flim flam to the people. It's what? Another million, $2 million. And it's, uh, it's too much money. That whole school project is too much money. You got a very expensive uh, architect in there dealing with all this. Castle and Booze. They, they, uh, even the name. Oh, that sounds funny. Um, they, uh, I think they've been in, attached to too many of our projects, and I don't uh, think that they actually have done a good job over there. It's. The, they've caught it's cost us too much money and, and Linden Street School cost us too much money you had to bring in 45 extra kids from another locale to justify that building now I'm holding my breath about Wheeler School I think I've heard the right in, information now that you're gonna pick special uh, or you're going to pick um, pre-k kids and bring them over i think we'll see but i hope it's not going to be 45 kids from another locale which is going to cost us taxpayers 13 14 thousand dollars per kid per year that really adds up to an awful lot of money so uh, there's so many issues so many so many issues uh, i'm too numerous to covered tonight. The quarry, I say no to participating in that project. No, 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 no. Do you not understand the word no? And where is your opinion on it? We don't hear anything from the council's side of it. No, no. It, it, we, uh, we know what no means. No means no. That's it. That's my take. Thank you. Does anybody else wish to speak that hasn't spoken yet? Last chance? Okay, thank you for your comments. We'll close this section of the meeting. Moving on. We do not have any old business items, so we are on our new business. Madam Chair? Yes. Uh, I'd like to make a motion to establish public hearing on Monday, June 18th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Municipal Center to hear public comment on an ordinance entitled Ordinance Establishing Fourth Quarter Transfers for Fiscal Year Ending June 30th, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any comment on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number two. Madam Chair, yes. motion to establish a public hearing on Monday, June 18th, 2018 at 7 p.m. in the Municipal Center to hear public comment on an additional appropriation for the fiscal year 2018 budget. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Number three. Madam Chair? Yes. A motion to award bid number 2018-23 WPC Phosphorus Removal Upgrade Project to Daniel O'Connell's Sons, Holyoke, Massachusetts, in the amount of $11,164,800. Second. I have a motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number four. Madam Chair? Yes. Motion to approve Trident as the town's liability auto and property insurance provider effective July 1st, 2018. Second. I have a motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? Other than what's already been said, with the savings of almost two hundred thousand dollars, I think this is uh, this is a good thing for us. Thanks for all the work that went into it. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Number five. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion to approve the revenue collector suspense list. Second. Motion and a second. Any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. 
Thank you. Number six. Madam Chair. Yes. Motion to approve the tax refunds as listed on the addendum. Second. The motion and a second. Is there any discussion on the motion? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Thank you. Madam Chair. Yes. Oh, sorry. Jump the ball. Oh, go ahead. <laughs> I leave a lot when you get ahead. Go ahead. Um, Mr. Lee, are there any other um, items of interest for discussion? I do not have any. No. Okay. Thank you. Um, now you may. Yes. Motion to adjourn. Second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you very much. Thank you.